How's it going, guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off my comic and manga haul from April 2024. Uh, fair few books this month, but I do want to say I won't have a haul for May of 2024. Uh, my monthly package shipped with one book in it, and it shipped on like May 5th. So I assume that either means there was an error or I only had one book scheduled to ship this month, which is something that's never happened before. So I'm not really sure how that's going to pan out. But uh, I'll probably just replace that video with another uh, review or overview type thing. But let's get going with Fable. Oh, obviously I'm not going to spoil anything really. I haven't read these books, most of them. I'm just going to flip through them and talk about why I bought them. Um, the Fable, Omnibus Volume 1 by Katsuhisa Minami, published by Kadansha in a paperback format, retailing for $23 US. Um... I don't even remember where I saw this. I think it was uh, like a YouTuber kind of talking about his favorite manga or something. I really couldn't tell you. From what I know, this is a assassin who is prolific and well-regarded in his field and does such a good job that there's uh, a lot of heat on him from all these different factions, and so he's got to go into hiding for a year. And essentially the story is him trying to live a normal life. Um, having never done so before, and can he do that? Can he go from this stone-cold killer to a normal person and play it cool for however long he's supposed to be? Maybe a year, six months. Um, and that's pretty much what this is about. It's just about a killer trying to live a normal life. Not really by choice. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Maybe he comes to... I expect it's something like he comes to enjoy a more slow, peaceful life and kind of come around to that idea and not want to be a killer anymore. But I can also see a tragic ending where he, you know, goes back to being an assassin or whatever. Um, I'm not sure, but that's kind of my ex expectations for the book. Obviously, there's going to be quite a bit of action. Um, I did, if I remember right, there's a fair bit of comedy, uh, a little bit of slice of life. I think that the art looks really uh, unique for manga, where it... It has a very manga feel, but it looks a bit more cartoony. I think it works well for a more slice-of-life type book, but then you get these really detailed panels on close-ups, um, and I think that kind of style works for tonal shifts, where you can have this cartoony, um, humorous style, and then when action happens, you get really into the nitty-gritty, like how it starts. Uh, but yeah, I'm really interested to read this. I don't know if I'll start soon, because I kind of want to let them stack up because it seems like something super bingeable to me but we'll see how that works out don to don volume 7 uh by yuki nobutatsu published by viz under the shonen jump imprint retailing for 12 dollars us this is don to don i cover it on the channel uh, every time i read a new volume i'm not going to go too deep into it i don't even really want to flip through this because i don't want to get spoiled uh, I love the book. If you're interested in the book and you don't know about it, check one of my videos or any creator's videos or written review, anything. Uh, it's probably my favorite ongoing manga right now. Let's not do all the manga at once, huh? Maybe I, I don't want to get too crazy. Spine Tingling Spider-Man by Marvel, um, written by Saladin Ahmed and art by Juan Ferreira, published by Marvel, obviously, retailing for $20 US was a digital first series, four issues. Um, I have no interest in this on, at face value. I bought it because Juan Ferreira is one of my favorite artists. I think he is absolutely brilliant and so unique in his style, and I just adore his work so much so that I will buy literally anything, even if it had just a story that I actively hated, I would probably buy the book just to see his art. And I do like Saladin Ahmed's um, writing, from what I've read. I think it's going to be a good book. It's a horror spin on Spider-Man. I'm just not in a big superhero mood lately, but something a little off-kilter like this, where a horror twist on a classic character might kind of be more up my alley. Look at that. So this was originally like a vertical scrolling... Um, I think, a vertical scrolling digital issue, so you only saw one panel on your screen, you scrolled and you saw a second panel, and they've reconstructed it and put all these panels together, I think is how it worked. Never read the digital version. But um, I think layout-wise, it kind of works. I don't know if they consulted uh, Ferreira for this, 
or if it was just like someone who like you know whose job is to lay out things like this um but it looks great his art is to die for couldn't be happier to have another juan ferreira book in my collection let's do the enfield gang massacre by chris condon and jacob phillips uh published by image and retailing for 17 dollars us pretty thick trade in comparison yeah, pretty dense. A lot different finish on the cover, and the the paper is like super toothy, dry, um, no matte finish on it. it. Gives a completely different vibe to the art. Uh, if this was on like varnished paper, everything would be really shiny and glossy. Um, this is just if you're hearing a background sound. I'm sorry. That is one of the only things I cannot prevent in my home. Um, it's just super interesting. This is a throwback to um that texas blood i think it's like a historical piece set in the same universe as that texas blood uh i think it's a western i don't know anything other than that besides uh jacob phillips and chris condon are awesome creators i really enjoy their stuff i love the cartooning uh and the artwork by phillips and i love westerns it's one of my favorite genres this looks insane um i don't have much else to say i just i'm really excited for this I need to catch up on that Texas blood so I can start digging into that. Yeah, let's get back to manga. Uh, Stitches. Short, short stories by Hirokatsu Kihara. Art by Junji Ito. Published by Viz, as all Junji Ito's works are. In a hardcover format. Retailing for $18 US. This is not a typical graphic novel. This is uh, Hirokatsu Kihara's stories. His retellings of stories. Uh, illustrated with, or kind of accompanied by, I suppose, illustrations by Ito. So not fully comics, but it is Junji Ito artwork, and it is something a little different. It's prose. It's full prose with, like, notes of, of sequential storytelling. Um, at the very end, you do get a little bonus comic that's read right to left, it appears. So that's cool. So if you're only in it for, like, comics, the classic comics... Um, then this should, you know, satiate you for Junji Ito. I bought it just because I am a elitist, or not elitist. I guess I am that too. A completionist for, uh, for Junji Ito, and so I was very interested to... That's... Oh, it's almost the same picture, but it's not. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just very into his art, so I just didn't really care if it was with prose or if it was with, um... A classic comic, or if it was written on like a, a paper towel, I would still, I would still see it. So I would still buy it. Vinland Saga Deluxe Hardcover Book Two by Makoto Yukimura. It's so heavy and large that it's pushing my little table here. Published by Kadansha in this massive hardcover with faux leather treatment, retailing for fifty-five dollars U.S. So this is a very similar treatment to the Berserk Deluxe Editions and the Blade of the Immortal Deluxe Editions. It is Kadansha trying to emulate what Dark Horse has done for these kind of prestige formats of manga. Um, uh, embossed, or has debossed inlay on the cover. If I can maybe get the light to hit it, textured. Uh, really nice treatment on this book. Um, I haven't cracked the spine on this, so we're going to do that while I show you. Um... I haven't read the first one yet. I wanted to let them stack up a bit. Uh, it is one of the classic seinen um, manga of all time. It's, you know, a Viking story, essentially. Uh, from what I know, it's a redemption slash revenge story. Um, although I'm sure it's just a sprawling narrative that can't be pinned down to one thing. Uh, I've heard it praised for its historical accuracy in terms of, like, setting and mood. It's not a true story, but it is um, attempts to be extremely accurate when it comes to um the feeling of being in this era the technology the 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 areas the cultures the language um so i am excited for this i haven't started on it yet uh you get little maps which is awesome i haven't started on it yet it's just a daunting thing to do i've been every time i go to grab something off my shelf lately it's just been let's grab a trade paperback let's grab let's grab a six issue miniseries something easily digestible, something I can consume in one sitting or two. Um, this is not that. This is 
Black Widow by Phil Noto, Mitch Garretts, and Nathan Edmondson. Marvel Epic Collection. My first Marvel Epic Collection, because I don't really care to have them. Um, it's called Chaos. Obviously published by Marvel and retailing for $45 US. This is just the easiest way to get. This was just printed. And I had a friend who highly recommended the um, Edmondson Noto run with also Mitch Garrett's showing up. Um, and he was just, he's not a huge comic guy. He reads them on occasion and he was, had some high praise for this. Um, so it's Black Widow. It's going to be a spy thriller. Um, I don't know much about it. I know Phil Noto is uh, absolutely in his own field, essentially, when it comes to comic art. I think that it's extremely unique for the medium. And I think Mitch Garrett's actually does a pretty good job emulating it and kind of matching his style. It's early Garrett's, um, so it's not at all the Garrett's you're going to be used to seeing with uh, Tom King's works. But uh, I'm really excited to finally read it. I haven't read almost anything written by Nathan Edmondson, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't think I really have. But it's my only Marvel Epic collection. I don't plan on getting more unless it just happens to collect a run that I've always wanted to collect, so... That's about that. Let's get everything stacked up here. This thing is hefty. Yeah. So, um, I'm really excited about all these books. I think the one I'm looking forward to most would be a tie between the Enfield Gang Massacre and The Fable. Um, those two are just the ones that I've been waiting a long time for. I honestly can't remember what drew me to the fable. I just remember listening to a video um, of someone just raving about it, thinking it was the best thing they've read in years. And so I hope it lives up to that. It looks to be very awesome and cool, and I'm really excited about it. So if you guys have any recommendations or if there's anything that came out recently that I missed that you think I should cover, let me know. Um, I'm going to try and get the uploads going a bit quicker. I'm still trying to put out one a week. Um, ideally I would do two a week, but we'll see if there's time to read that much. But, uh, thanks a lot for watching guys. Peace.